These stink bugs haven't heard what's trending at the moment, and that's fire. The beep has been removed from this video, and as always, this video is highly educational. Beep, beep, beep. One of the biggest pests in our backyard are stink bugs. I hate stink bugs. Number one, they destroy your citrus trees. Number two, they stink. And number three, they're just plain ugly. This video is a study of the effect of detergent versus fire on the stink bug eggs that are laid underneath the leaves of citrus trees. I've had people whisper in my ear, all you need to do is spray detergent and water on your citrus trees and the stink bugs are gone, problem solved. Hey, it's a lot of fun spraying detergent on your citrus trees, watching the stink bugs getting annoyed, and you sort of say to yourself, yeah, I think the problem's solved. But is the problem actually solved? Personally, I have great faith in fire. Fire cleanses everything. Fire will resolve every issue you have in life. And from what I understand, fire is a fantastic control method to get stink bugs off your tree in an environmentally friendly way. Fire is fantastic because you're not spraying chemicals onto the tree and I'm yet to see a stink bug survive a lick of fire. They fall to the ground and they're gone quick smart. But what about the stink bug eggs? It takes a mating pair of stink bugs three to five days to produce 10 to 14 eggs. The incubation period of the eggs is around about seven days but it all depends on the weather. So when you have two lovely stink bugs who can replicate themselves say 12 times over in what is fairly short time, you have an infestation building up very quickly. This study of the stink bugs egg matrix hatching, which is laid up on the back of the leaves, is shot with time-lapse photography which compresses time, and it's pretty simple. All the leaves are affected by detergent, the leaves on the left of the screen are not affected by heat or fire in any way. The leaves in the middle of the screen have had a little bit of heat on them, but not completely crispy critter. And the leaves on the right have been affected by a lot of fire. As we trawl along in time, I've put a number within frame so I understand what day of the shoot it is. But there's one thing I don't know, and that's when the eggs were laid onto the back of the leaves. So it's a countdown in time to see which egg sacs will develop and hatch the nymph stink bugs. And in the strangest way, by studying this, I learned a lot about the stink bugs' eggs and what the nymphs get up to once they've hatched. They're cute little things when they've hatched. Quite curious critters indeed. Now in no way am I starting to fall in love with stink bugs, but there's always that great saying, understand your enemy. And in this video, I will parrot what I read from the Wikipedia site related to this species of stink bugs, because this is educational material, or else YouTube will flag it off their site. So already on day one, I see the egg clutch, which was partially hatched, which has been affected by some heat, has had successful further hatchings. And these little stink bugs, they do this strange thing where they hover around the area where they're hatched for some period of time, quite a number of hours, and then they'll venture out, but they'll keep coming back to the clutch of opened eggs, and they do this repeatedly until one by one they've all found another place to go. I'm not going to talk about where they go. You probably think, oh, they're all through your workshop. Don't worry, I've got a little trap set up just outside of frame. Just remember, in no way am I friends of these pests of the garden, but I have learned here that a leaf which has been affected by heat and detergent still had successful hatchings, which worries me a lot. There's still another matrix of eggs there, which has been affected by a little bit of heat, and it's going to be curious whether they hatch as well. I move on to day two, and when I say day two, it's 24 hours of light. There's no night time at all for these poor little critters. And the matrix of eggs on one of the leaves that has no heat effect on it, I'll call it only affected by detergent, starts to hatch. One comes out first, and it's almost like it's checking out to see what's going on. And all of a sudden, almost in synchronicity, the others hatch. It's almost beautiful to watch. I'm getting sucked in by looking at these nymph stink bugs. But what I'm witnessing is a horror story. These are the greatest pests in our garden. Like I said at the start of the video, I can't stand stink bugs. 
but I need to understand how to break down their breeding cycle and stop them from doing what you're seeing right now, and that is producing lots more stink bugs. These stink bug nymphs acted a little bit differently versus that other half clutch we watched open up. They hovered around near where they hatched, and it wasn't until the next day, which is the third day of the study, when they decided to start trekking away from the place where they were born into my little trap that you can't see off screen. Don't worry, once they're in that trap, they're going nowhere. So what have we learned from this? Well, it's quite simple. Detergent on the citrus trees has no effect on pulling up the stink bug nymphs from hatching from their eggs. So it takes a few more days for the next batch of eggs to hatch and we zoom through the rest of day three, day four, day five, day six, and we're just watching the leaves wilt as time goes on. Then on day seven, the next matrix of eggs begin to hatch. And this leaf is the last of the leaves that are not affected by heat or fire, but it is affected by detergent. It's a very similar activity to what we see on the previous eggs that have hatched. And it looks like there's a couple of nymphs that have failed to hatch. So seeing a couple of eggs fail to hatch, I'm not sure whether that's a natural thing. And I've got a feeling the nymphs are doing something before they take off away from the eggs they've hatched from. I have read stink bugs can be cannibalistic, but I'm not sure whether that goes on in that very early nymph stage. I typed into Google a simple query, how long do stink bugs live? It came back with the answer six to eight months. So it's a general answer, but it's a very complicated and deep bunny hole when you start looking at all the different varieties of stink bugs. And to try to relate where stink bugs are in the insect world, it's very complicated. I could sound smart and just parrot what I read off Wikipedia, but I'll put links down in this video if I remember. And it talks about true bugs, where there are over 80,000 species, which includes cicada, aphids, plant hoppers, leaf hoppers, assassin bugs, bed bugs, shield bugs. Then you've got suborders under that, intra orders under that, and then super families. It's really, really complicated. And it seems like that critters and bugs get identified or grouped by their similarities. Be it the number of legs they have, the number of segments in their body, the way they feed, and the way they reproduce all seem to be the things that group things together in the insect world. It's bloody complicated. And what's embarrassing for me is there are so many words used in the insect critter world that I can't even pronounce. So I'm not even going to go there. As I was blabbering on there, back on day 8, another heat and detergent affected matrix of stink bug eggs hatched. So on screen now are only heat affected leaves and fire affected leaves. And all these leaves have been affected by detergent. By day 10, the last of the heat affected leaves has a hatching going on. This is a curious hatching because there are some eggs that have failed. In fact, about half of them have failed to hatch. And again, around the hatched eggs, I see the stink bugs in a group and they're doing something I don't know what they're doing. I'm hoping someone with a much higher intelligence is watching this and can explain to me what's going on there in those hours just after they come out of their eggs. And it is many hours because remember this is time-lapse video and it's all time compressed so we're seeing lots of time evolving in front of you in very short time. What I will say, and hopefully what you've witnessed, is the activity of the stink bug nymphs, once they've hatched from the eggs, has been consistent across all of the egg matrixes that we've watched hatching up to this point. By day 11, I only focus on what are fire and detergent affected leaves. These leaves have been affected by fire, but for only a very short time. I keep showing you slow motion versions of the flamethrower on the stink bugs, in real time, it's very quick. And if I put up a little show reel here, without the video being slowed up, you'll understand what I mean. But it always looks cooler in slow motion. And look at the stink spraying from these bugs as they are hit by fire. That's their defensive mechanism, which can spray out at least two feet, and that's over half a meter. But thankfully, the flamethrower always wins. 
From here on, the time-lapse camera is rolling from day 12 up to day 18 on what is only fire-affected leaves. As yet, we've seen no action from this side of the table, and while we're watching this, I will read the Wikipedia page, or parts of it, related to the stink bugs that I've been dealing with. The first words I can't even say. I'm going to get the computer to say this word here. Muscovia salsiventris. Is a large stink bug found in Australia, sometimes known as the bronze orange bug. It's considered a pest. I told you they were pests, particularly to plants in the citrus group. Bronze orange bugs suck the sap from trees, which causes the flowers and fruit to fail. And I certainly know once you get an infestation of stink bugs on your citrus trees, you get no fruit. In 1863, Swedish entomologist Carl Stoll described the species as, I'll get the computer to say this word, Oncosilis salsiventris, from a collection near Morton Bay in Queensland. In 1957, English entomologist Dennis Leston and G.G.E. Scudder reclassified the bronze orange bug as, Muscrevilla salsiventris, due to the reorganisation of Oncosilis and related genera. It is a type of species of the genus Muscrevilla and in the Tesseratomidae family. Like I said, there's words here I've got no way of understanding how to say. The reading gets a bit easier from here. Bronze orange bugs are first found on trees in late winter. Mating takes place between late November through to early March. And I tell you what, I've seen a lot of mating. Each mating pair takes three to five days to produce 10 to 14 eggs. The female lays up to four clutches of eggs and deposits them on the undersurface of a leaf. The bright green spherical eggs are around 2.5 millimeters or 0.1 inches in diameter. The incubation period varies based on current weather conditions. Hatchings average around 7.4 days at 25 degrees Celsius and 6% humidity. As a light green nymph, as we've seen in this video plenty of times, they are difficult to spot and often mistaken for different species. The bronze orange bug has five stages of development known as instars. The first instar remain huddled near the eggs. Hey, we've seen that clearly in this video. They are transparent pale green with orange eyes. The second instar are more buff or pale yellow. Adults grow to be approximately 25 millimeters, nearly one inch long, and go from orange to their more familiar bronze color as they develop. Reading further on about ecology, it talks about the native host plants, including desert lime, the Australian finger lime, and basically any citrus tree in your backyard, become a target for these pests. It has become a major pest of cultivated citrus crops, where it sucks the fluid from new growth and young fruit, causing them to turn yellow and drop off. Whole crops can be devastated by these stink bugs. The common name of stink bug refers to the malodorous liquid that the insect sprays when it's threatened. It's composed of alkalines, simacine, aldehydes from glands in the thorax. These compounds primarily serve as protection against fellow arthropods, to which they are lethal. However, a defensive chemicals of M. Salsiventris are known for being amongst the most debilitating to vertebrates, which is likely a defense specifically aimed against birds. I can tell you something now, I've never seen a bird pick off a stink bug, and now I understand why. Stink bugs can cause damage to human skin, and even cause temporary blindness if sprayed in the eyes. The bronze orange bug can spray the liquid at a target up to 0.6 meters, which is two feet away. I think we've covered that earlier in the video. Insects that prey on the bronze orange bug include the common assassin bug, Crispusancus plagipennis, the predatory Asopony bug species, Amiotia hamatus, and parasitoid wasps, Eupelmus pogony, and Telenomus. Anyway, all I know is I don't have enough of those predatory critters that like to take out stink bugs. Thank goodness for educational content, hey YouTube. While I was doing that read from the Wikipedia page of all those very difficult words, we crawled up to day 18 and we were waiting for those fire affected leaves to hatch the nymph stink bugs. Did we see any action at all from these leaves? I saw nothing. If anything, those eggs have got darker in color. 
and whatever was going on inside those eggs has halted in development. It just proves how effective fire is at taking out the adult stink bugs plus the eggs that they lay on the back of the leaves. I know you're going to think, Leo, you have just destroyed your citrus tree by putting the flamethrower through it. Well, no, the reverse happens. The leaves that are affected by fire will go brown, they will drop to the ground. The citrus tree looks terrible after it's been firebombed, but it's the best thing for it. Come in and give it a prune and wait a bit of time and you'll be amazed with how it bounces back. In fact, let me step outside right now and I'll shoot some video exactly one year since I put the flamethrower through the tree. I try and do a funky mesh with that still photo and this is exactly one year on, on the same citrus tree in our backyard and it looks very healthy indeed. I can see lots of flowers there. I can see bees going to the flowers and I'm just hoping there's no stink bugs here at the moment. It's a simple equation, flowers equal fruit and this is what we've got to protect. I am fearful that I'm going to find a couple of stink bugs here because this would be prime pickings for stink bugs. It's amazing growth uh, considering how much it was cut back. Mind you, last year, which was 2022, there was a phenomenal amount of rain. and I think that's really aided in this citrus tree in getting back on its feet. And if I pull back some of the foliage here, that's a good example. I think here is a great example. You can see the point where it got cut back to, where my thumb is, and all that's come up from that area is all new growth. And that's repeated all around the tree. This here is a classic example. You can see where it was cut back to, and you can just see the explosion of growth from that area. It's quite amazing. Just stepping back again, at least I'm seeing flowers there. This time last year in that tree, I was seeing no flowers at all. So yeah, on this citrus tree here, which is our focus one, I'm not seeing too much stink bug activity, but when I look at the tree next to this one, it's a bit of a different story. And let me just go over to my iPhone to shoot the next segment. I'm on my iPhone at the very top of the tree. I can see that business going on there. Dirty work. Lurking in the shadows, I can see this going on here. There's another mating pair just there. In fact, the more I look here, the more I see. And I also see a couple of lone rangers having a good old feed. Sorry guys, the party's over. Very hard to reach right on the top over the back of the flame for open reach. Another Mackey cluster in there, good night sister. That little shadow party, no longer, and the other one down there, gone. It was fun while it lasted. These two stink bugs were complaining about the cold. Well, no longer. I wonder if stink bugs can count. Three, two, one. There's one up there playing silhouette games. Well, that's not going to last long. Well, these two here sprayed some stink at me. Well, guess what I'm going to spray back? Just doing some more grooming at the back of the tree. Okay. Well, this party thought they were hiding in the middle of the tree. Bad decision. These stink bugs haven't heard what's trending, and that's fire. Okay, I'm back on the other camera. Uh, you can see the day is getting on a bit, the shadows are getting long. I was actually quite surprised how many stink bugs are on this tree in frame right here. It's one of these things, the more you look, the more you see. But I'm quite happy, very pleased with how few were on this tree here, which is really much of the focus of this quite complicated video. And if we haven't learned anything in this video, I just get flagged off the site, but that's situation normal with today's YouTube. Up the end here, I will show you the little area I had set up to shoot the time-lapse footage and the trap that I'd set up to capture the nymph stink bugs. It's a pretty simple trap, and I learned about this method when I was doing the spider tank videos, and people were discussing in the comments area on how to roll up pieces of tape to capture critters. It works on the same idea as that sticky fly paper trap stuff. And the tape I'm using is just a generic cheap style of gaffer tape that I purchased from Aldi. 
the idea of doing this video and looking at the eggs came about once I read into those stink bugs and I saw that the incubation time is basically a week and I thought to myself, okay, I think I can capture this with a time-lapse camera and get a series of different leaves to tell a story. I did wonder how many eggs can a female stink bug lay in her lifetime, let's say the lifetime's six to eight months. I looked online and I saw a big variation in numbers. I saw some people saying it's 100 eggs she lays in her lifetime. Other sites were saying figures up near 800 eggs in a lifetime. And then there was other sites that were saying, oh, it's 400 eggs in a lifetime. With that big sort of variation and spread, I think there's a fair bit of guesstimation going on. And in my uneducated mind, it always comes down to the right conditions. If a stink bug is in the right conditions without predators around, that female can basically do whatever she wants. And I sort of learned that lesson from studying female redback spiders. I'm glad I did this little study because there are a lot of naysayers online who don't really see an alternative picture or another way of doing stuff. And what it did to me was confirmed something that I already knew, but it's always nice to lay it down on video and serve it to you and say, hey, this is what happens when you hit something with fire. The other curious part to this video is it's delayed by many months because I had a big computer failure and I had to get another computer, but I had to wait for it to be available because of the computer chip shortage without saying certain words which it's related to. I hope you understand what I'm talking about there. And because of that push back in time waiting for Crapple to deliver a computer to me, it ended up lining up when I edited the video with the footage that I took of spraying the detergent and the flamethrower from exactly one year ago. And it's just nice to have the whole package there to show the end result after one year of some fairly radical pest control. And honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way.